Hi there and welcome to Transcona Trailer Sales. Today we'll be walking you through your 2020 Conquest 199RK. We're just going to start off with the back of the unit here. If you notice you are too wired for an observation camera, if you'd like to get set up with one of those, you can contact the parts department and we can put together a quote for you. You also have your spare tire in the back. And then last but not least, you do have your water heater access port. Whenever you first get your campsite, you are just going to want to get this pressure relief valve pull. There should be a shot of water coming out of there, letting you know that the tank's full. We currently have the tank drained, ready for customer pickup, and that's why there's no water coming out of there. So it wouldn't be safe to turn on that water heater right now. You got your inch and an eighth drain bolt right down at the bottom. And then I'm going to go over a re reset procedure once we get inside. The button I'm going to refer to is just right here. In this corner, as well as all four corners of the unit, you do have stabilizer jacks. The way those, the way those works is we do have a tool located inside the front compartment. You're just going to hook it up to here. It's essentially just a three quarter inch socket. Run this foot down to the ground. Once the foot contacts the ground, just giving another eighth quarter turn just to snug it up. It's going to take any bounce or sway you see we have in the unit right now away. And then locate it, usually located inside this back bumper is a sewer hose. And once fully extended, it is about 20 feet long. We just keep them usually stored inside there just to keep most of the smell out of the unit. This one's probably brand new and still inside the front compartment, which I'll show you in a second. You've got your main sewer outlet, so those are gonna, this is going to have the same ears that your sewer hose does. Just connects like you see here. you got your black tank and your gray tank. You're always going to want to empty your black tank first. This is going to be your dirtiest water filled from your toilets. And then you can follow behind that with your gray tank, which is typically a little cleaner water filled from your sinks and your showers. And then you do have two low point drains just right here, so if you want to empty the lines, because you're leaving the unit for a while, you don't want the water going stale or stagnant. You can just loosen off those caps, take them out of there. It's going to drain all the water that's inside the lines. It helps if you're ever changing a faucet or anything either. A lot less water draining all over the place. You have your 30 amp power supply cord just right here. Just plugs in like so. If you, and if you don't have 30 amp service, we do include a 15 amp park adapter. Just keep in mind when you're going down to 15 amps power, you're not going to be running your air conditioner. It's just going to be really to run your lights in your fridge. Get your city water connection, so if you're out of sight with service, throw the garden hose in here, turn it on. It's going to pressurize all the lines without the need to run your water pump. Then you do have your fresh tank fill located right beside it. Put a garden hose in there, turn it on. Fills that fresh tank, and that's what your water pump draws off. Right down below here is going to be that little hose there. And inside this front compartment is where you're going to find the valve. It's located on the right side of the tank. With it turned straight, the valve is closed. If you were to turn that valve to the right or the left, it is gonna open it and allow the tank to drain. You got your water pump here and that's where you're gonna get access to hook up a bypass hose for winterization. And then you do have your starter kit, which does include that sewer hose I told you about, as well as that 15 amp park adapter. Again, the ears on the sewer hose, the same ears that were on the sewer outlet. And then, it's just that stabilizer jack tool I told you about. Again, all four corners of the unit should have one. And you just hook it up and run it down to the ground. Located up front here, you do have this cover we put on there for the propane. It just unbuttons like so. And you can take that cover off. It gives you access to that propane tank. To loosen it off, you just have to loosen this wing nut off and you can pull this tank right out of place. You got your tongue jack to open up the flow of propane. You just counterclockwise with the valve. It opens up the flow. Located inside this black box is gonna be your 27 RV battery. And then coming around the left side, you got two exterior plugs. You got some exterior speakers. This right here is just a uh, service port your, for your refrigerator not much you need to worry about there and then whenever your furnace is running that guy's gonna be pushing out hot air so just be mindful of that opening up the door step on inside you got that step it folds down stepping inside first thing you know it's off on your left it's gonna be that fire extinguisher it's gonna be simple pull the pin and shoot you got a light switch on your left and that's gonna do this these couple entrance lights and then the button on the right does turn on that exterior porch light. And then if you come inside, you've got that switch for the awning, pushing and holding that button out. That awning's gonna start making its way out. Once fully extended, you're gonna see the back of the metal tube and a little flap hang down. 
Unfortunately today, I don't know if we'll be able to get all the way out just due to space, but we'll be able to get the gist of it. So that is about all we're gonna be able to go today, but there would have been a little flap that hang down and you'd be able to see the back of that metal tube once fully extended. When you do get to about five to 10 kilometer hour winds, you are gonna to wanna to make sure you bring that in. That way you don't run the risk of ripping your fabric or bending your arms. Retracting is just as simple as pushing and holding that retract button. Bonnie's gonna start rolling in. Once the arms contact the side of the trailer, the motors will just automatically cut out. All the blinds in the unit do work the same way. They're just gonna kind of sit where you leave them. This is gonna be your fire exit for the unit. You're just gonna pull this little white tab. The screen will pop right out of place and you'll be able to take this put handle, push it out of the unit and hop right on out. All the other lights in the unit just are on their own center push buttons so you can turn them on as you desire. You're gonna have your little TV location right here. There is a TV back around the wall in case you were to want to mount it right on the wall. You got some coax cables to go through to your stereo. You're gonna see this little red light on. That's just letting you know that the antenna on is on on the roof. It also improves radio frequency. So typically we do just leave them on, but you can turn them off just by pressing the button. You got some storage space right here. You got your main fuse, fuse and breaker panel right down below. Whenever a breaker trips, it's gonna sit in the middle, so you do just have to turn it off and then back on again to reset it. And you do have all your fuses on your right. You got an LP detector right here, the furnace and the stove both run off propane. If this guy ever starts going off, you're just gonna to wanna to turn off the main supply of propane at the front of the unit. You open up some windows just to ventilate it out again. This is gonna be your dinette. This does fold down into your bed. You just have to pull these bottom feet out, sit that tabletop on this ledge, and then you can take your back cushions to fill in the center. You're gonna have your stereo here, which is pretty much just like home, minus the fact of having zone one and zone two. Zone one is gonna be for this speaker here. Zone two is gonna be for your two exterior speakers. The couch does fold down into a bed as well. You're just having to grab the foot of that couch, and it folds down like so, and then you can fold it in just by grabbing and kind of pulling, and you assist it back into place. Again, all the blinds in the unit do work the same way, and all the lights are on their own set of push buttons. You do have your dometic fridge, which can run off AC power or gas. So hitting that power button, if you have this flush, it's going to be on auto. So it's going to first search for shore power. And once shore power is taken away, it'll automatically switch over to gas. If you want it to run solely on gas, you do just have to depress that button. If this check light were to come on anytime, that's just letting you know that it didn't fire up on gas. So you would just have to turn the fridge off give it about 30 seconds and then try turning it back on because sometimes you do have to purge all the air out of the propane lines. You got your stove right here, works pretty simple. You're just turning both those knobs over to light and hit it with a lighter and it fires right on up. Got your microwave, which is just like home, not much I'm gonna show you there. Right on the wall here, you're gonna have your switch for your water heater, turning that on. This little red light's gonna come on the water heater is going to try lighting itself three times. If on the third try it doesn't light, this light is going to stay on. In that case, you do just have to turn that switch off, go hit that reset button, and then come back in here and try it again, and it'll try relighting itself. Because like I said, sometimes it does take a bit to get all the air out of the lines. You got some storage space all around on the wall here. You're going to have your monitor panel system as well as your water pump switch. Turn that pump on, draws from your fresh tank, and then you got your monitor panel system, which does tell you all the tank and battery level. And then you got your thermostat for your furnace on the wall. To turn your furnace on, you do just have to turn that switch over. And then you got a little dial on the bottom here for how hot you want it, sliding it all the way to the right is its hottest setting. And then up on the ceiling, you got your controls for your AC. It's gonna say it has a heat pump, but the heat pump, there is no heat pump installed in these ACs. It's just an air conditioner, or you can run it just as a fan. If you have it on the blue, the AC is on. If you have it on the gray, it's just the fan. You can run it with these louvers closed, in which case it'll move all its air through these flaps you have on either side, or you can open these flaps up and it'll just dump all its air straight down. You do have a couple of roof vents, one being in the kitchen area. It is good just to crack that open if you're ever cooking on the stove, just to help evacuate some of those fumes. And then in the bathroom, there is one with a fan. Again, just opening that guy up. You got a power switch right there, turns on. Inside the bathroom, pretty much just like home, minus the fact of having your GFI out, main outlet on the wall here. If you ever have an outlet that doesn't work, this would be the first place I'd check. You got reset on the, on the left and 
test in the middle. If this green light's on, it's telling you you have a good circuit. That's going to be it for this unit here. If you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call.